weird Spotlight TV wanted to offer our condolences to the family and friends of Charlie Watts, the iconic drummer of the Rolling Stones. The musician passed away Tuesday at a London area hospital. A representative for Watts said that the musician passed away peacefully in a London hospital earlier today, surrounded by his family. No cause of death was given yet. The publicist said, Charlie was a cherished husband, father, and grandfather, and also as a member of the Rolling Stones, one of the greatest drummers of his generation. Concerns about Watt's health came up earlier this year, when he announced that, despite being the band's resident drummer since 1963, he would be sitting out their 2021 U.S. no-filter tour in order to recover from an undisclosed medical procedure. The quiet, elegantly dressed Watts was often ranked with Keith Moon, Ginger Baker, and a handful of others as a premier rock drummer respected worldwide for his muscular swinging style as the band rose from its scruffy beginnings to international stardom. He joined the Stones early in 1963 and remained over the next 60 years, ranked just behind Mick Jagger and Keith Richards as the group's longest lasting and most essential member. Watts stayed on and largely held himself apart through the drug abuse, creative clashes, and ego wars that helped kill founding member Brian Jones, drove bassist Bill Wyman and Jones' replacement Mick Taylor to quit, and otherwise made being in the Stones the most exhausting of jobs. The Stones began, Watts said, as white blokes from England playing black American music but quickly evolved their own distinctive sound. Watts was a jazz drummer in his early years and never lost his affinity for the music he first loved. Heading his own jazz band and taking on numerous other side projects. A classic stone song like Brown Sugar and Start Me Up often began with a hard guitar riff with Richards, which Watts followed closely behind and as his bassist Wyman liked to say, fattening the sound. What speed, power, and timekeeping were never better showcased than during the concert documentary Shine a Light, when director Martin Scorsese filmed Jumping Jack Flash from where he drummed towards the back of the stage. Watts had his eccentricities. He liked to collect cars even though he didn't drive and would simply sit in them in his garage. But he was a steady influence on stage and off as the Stones defied all expectations by rocking well into their 70s, decades longer than their old rivals, the Beatles. Watts didn't care for flashy solos or attention of any kind but with Wyman and Richards forged some of Rock's deepest grooves on Honky Tonk Women, Brown Sugar, and other songs. The drummer adopted well to everything from the disco of Miss You to the jazzy Can't You Hear Me Knockin' and the dreamy ballad Moonlight Mile. Jagger and Richards at times seemed to agree on little else besides their admiration of what both as a man and as a musician. Richards called Watts the key and often joked that their affinity was so strong that on stage he'd sometimes try to rattle Watts by suddenly changing the beat, only to have Watts change it right back. Jagger and Richards could only envy his indifference to stardom and relative contentment in his private life when he was as happy tending to his horses on his estate in rural Devon, England, as he ever was on stage at a sold-out stadium. Watts did on occasion have an impact beyond drumming. He worked with Jagger on the ever more spectacular stage designs for the group's tours. He also provided illustrations 
for the back cover of the acclaimed 1967 album, Between the Buttons, and inadvertently gave the record its title. When he asked Stone's manager, Andrew Oldham, what the album would be called, Oldham responded, Between the Buttons, meaning undecided. Watts thought that Between the Buttons was the actual name and included it in his artwork. To the world, he was a rock star, but Watts often said that the actual experience was draining and unpleasant and even frightening. Girls chasing you down the street, screaming, horrible, I hated it, he told the Guardian newspaper in an interview. In another interview, he described the drumming life as a cross between being an athlete and a total nervous wreck. Again, our condolences go out to his friends and his family. I know he's going to be missed.